I'm Head of Academia at the Medic Portal. Um, and in this webinar, what we're going to be looking at is how to use your, your UCAS score that you, you will have now to be strategic in terms of shortlisting your, your UCAS choices. So by the end of this webinar, what, uh, what we would aim for is for you to be able to walk away going, okay, these are the sort of universities that I'm going to be applying for. These are the sort of universities I'm going to be thinking about. These are the universities I'm going to find out a little bit more about myself. Um, I want to, to just say um, immediately at, at the start that we cannot make sort of direct recommendations that we would recommend that you apply here. That's not what this, this, this webinar is about, because again, it's a, it is a very holistic process where you apply to medical school is, is, is your choice. And, and it's very important that you're very happy doing so. Um, this is about giving you information about how universities use the UCAT score so that you can um, make a strategic application and, and to help you think about what university uh, you might want to, to apply to and you might want to put on your UCAS uh, application. So, sorry, just need to try and move on. We are uh, the Medic Portal, um, and it's very good to have you all here. Uh, we help aspiring medics get into medical school. We've taught over 40,000 aspiring medics. Um, we are trusted to deliver UCAT. Uh, prep up and down the country uh, in over 150 schools, including leading schools um, that routinely send tens and tens and tens of medics through each year. Um, we run the most popular interview prep, and I'm going to talk a little bit about interview prep right at the end, used by thousands of students uh, up and down the country. And we're very uh, proud to be partnered with uh, the Royal Society of Medicine. Um, I am very briefly, I'm Simon Pedley. I'm the head of academia at the Medic Portal, and I've been with the Career Portal since uh, 2018. Um, for the entirety of my, my professional life, I've been sort of supporting students with applications to um, elite uh, courses, including sort of medicine. So I worked as a post-16 advisor for a one of the largest uh, multi-academy trusts, uh, focusing on progression, particularly to medicine and other competitive uh, progression routes from some of the most deprived uh, areas of the country. Um, and you know, please say we were very successful in, in raising sort of participation in those above the national average, despite the, 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 the background of some of the students. Um, before that, I was a, a head of sick form at um, Bethany Academy, which was an outstanding school in, the, uh, in Tower Hamlets. But you didn't really come here to, to, to hear my CV. So um, we're going to kick off by uh, just looking at interim scores. So interim scores are um, released by UCAT when about sort of half the students who would sit the UCAT each year have done so. So this is the average scores for um, all the different elements, test verbal reasoning, uh, decision making, blah, 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 um, as well as the average scores overall. So of the students who sat the test up to the 12th of September, we have their average scores across the board. Um, this is really, really, really useful information because you will be able to see now live with your scores in front of you, how you would have uh, compared based on how you will compare based on other candidates this year. Um, the one thing to note about this sort of fairly sort of briefly is that the scores tend to dip by the end of the, the cycle. So students who sit the UCAT before the 12th of September tend to perform slightly better they tend to perform slightly better historically than students who sit them a little bit later and that does skew the averages a little bit um, so it might be that the interim scores this year as with with potentially previous years are slightly higher than what the averages will shake out to be now again this is really important because you will need to compare yourself or have a sense of how you would compare to your current cohort so these interim scores are really important to allow you to do that. Um, final point on what we've learned from some of the interim scores is that this year there were roughly 17,000 uh, candidates would have sat the test by the 12th of September. They would expect another 20,000 to sit the test by the end of the season, so by, by, by this week. Um, and that is a large number of students. Um, that's much more than in previous years. The important thing to know about that is that it does make things much more competitive 
even if, and we'll talk about things like cutoff scores and thresholds and things like that, even if the universities keep those the same, the mere fact that there are more students having sat the test will mean that more students will have what we would call a relatively high score by dint of there simply being more students overall than in previous years. Now, there are a slightly more medical places this year, but not, I would suspect, quite enough to counteract that. So these are the interim scores for this year. So you can see um, the 2021 interim scores are listed down there on the right. Um, and what you might notice um, is that there's a wider spread of scores. Again, as you'd expect from more people having sat the test. So if you're looking at the top end, and I can see you're probably looking at sort of deciles towards the side, and I'm gonna just explain briefly what that is in a minute. But broadly, higher scores, or to score something that is a high score, will require a slightly higher score than in previous years. Lower scores are slightly lower than in previous years. There is a more of a wide spread, um, again, as you would expect from more people having sat the test. So deciles, just to make sure that we're all really clear, because universities do use uh, concepts of deciles in terms of who they're going to invite and shortlist to interview. What this simply means is the percentage of students broken up by sort of 10 percentage points each um, over the course. So if you're in the ninth decile, you're in the top 10% of all applicants. Eighth decile, you're in the top 20%. If you're in the first decile, you're in the bottom 10%. And as you can see, say we take the top 10% of, of all scorers, to score in the top 10% this year, based on interim scores, you'd need to have scored slightly higher than you would have needed to in, pre in, in previous years and quite a bit higher than in 2019. Whereas at the bottom end, we can see that to be in the bottom 10%, the score needs to be slightly lower than they would have been in previous years. Um, and the middling scores have, have largely remained much the same. If we were thinking of a slightly expanded bell curve, that's not really too much of a surprise. Um, quick note on verbal reasoning as well. Um, I haven't got the, the comparison for you there, unfortunately, at the moment, but you can take it from me. The verbal reasoning interim score is higher than it has been quite a bit. Than in, than in previous years. Um, and I know that is, it's still obviously the, the most challenging area of the UCAT, as you can see, the score is slightly lower that, will, that obviously reflects that, um, but it is higher than in, in previous years. Um, so to get on to how to use these and how to think about these in terms of your university application, um, it's useful to think about high, medium and low scores. If only because we have bracketed universities ourselves into where we would suggest you think about if your score is high, if your score is medium, if your score is low. So we would say a high score is the top 20%. So a score of sort of 2,800 or above. Um, we would say a medium score sits in the middle, so 40 to 20%. So a score of 2,640 to uh, to 800 that obviously should say two rather than and not exclusively 2640 and 2800 um, and the bottom uh, a low score we would say was within the bottom 60 percent so a score of um, 2639 or below now I can see you thinking well hang on low is the bottom 60 percent realistically that's because a lot of people who apply to medicine are not successful so if we're thinking about sort of successful applicants and a strong application, we're waiting slightly towards the higher end anyway. Um, again, these are based on interim scores. So a final high, medium or low value may be slightly lower. Um, and again, the important thing that I want to stress as well is that these are relatively subjective distinctions. At the margin, it may not matter too much, but I think it is a useful way of thinking about it in terms of your application. Um, so. Moving on, thinking about how to apply strategically. If you have a high score, we should be thinking about applying to universities that place a high emphasis on that school. I'm gonna look at exactly what that looks like in some detail uh, in the next slide. That means potentially ranking applicants by that score alone or applying a hard cutoff score. If you have a medium score, you should think about universities that take a more holistic approach to reviewing your application and potentially give you a similar weight to everything else. Um, and finally, there are universities that you should think about if your score is lower 
and they value your, your grades, personal statement, other application factors higher than your UCAT score. So again, these are not, and I want to sort of emphasize what I said at, at the start, this is not a recommendation for us, this is an encouraging you to think about various universities according to your current UCAT score. There are other elements to a successful application. There are, um, might be that there are other universities that you would prefer to go to, but just using your UCAT score alone, these might be useful universities to, to think about um, when you're making your application. So, first off, our high school universities. So, um, all universities will be, be listed throughout this presentation, and these universities will either, they, these universities as a whole put a lot of weight on the UCAT, and they will either cut off at quite a high point, so that's the seventh decile for Aberdeen, um, you would need to score above that point in order to be considered for shortlisting, or you'd need to be ranked, uh, or they rank purely on UCAT score, um, for instance, uh, University of Glasgow, or they'll have thresholds that are very high, and that includes uh, Newcastle or Kings, where they would suggest that only the top 30% of applicants to Kings are going to be invited to interview. Now that is of the applicants that apply to Kings, and they make that very clear. So for Kings, again, would need to score very highly um, in order to be um, considered for shortlisting. Um, now, again, the, the other thing that I, I would want to mention is that um, for a lot of these universities, once they have decided to invite you to interview, your UCAT score may not make that much difference. Um, this is a shortlisting tool that the universities will use and when you get through to the interview stage, slightly different, some will use the SJT as interview. The UCAT then in many cases becomes less important. Um, now, I just want to re uh, reference as well that all of this is available on our website on our Medic School Comparison Tool. And um, all of this information has been checked within days, but are all, um, all details are available on the university's website, but it will also be available on our website as well. So again, High scoring universities use UCAT either entirely um, and or overwhelmingly and have very high thresholds in terms of inviting to interview. Now, the benefit of applying to a high scoring university, if that's what you wanted to do and you had a high UCAT score, is that other elements of your application are going to take relatively less importance in your application. So if you have a high UCAT score, applying to these universities plays to your strength. You have a high UCAT score. That is what they are mostly concerned about. You are playing to your strength by applying to these universities relative to potentially applying to universities where they place less weight on it. If you apply to somewhere with a high UCAT score that places less weight on the UCAT, you're potentially not using one of the best cards you have in your application pack. Um, so moving on to our medium score universities. These are universities that um, either have a cut off at a, a lower decile, so, so Anglo Ruskin cuts off at sixth rather than seventh decile, um, or they will use the UCAT score and the academic score together evenly. So for example, the University of uh, Leicester uh, uses the academic score and your UCAT score at a 50-50 split. Um, and the same thing is also true of uh, Queen Mary's London, which above a third decile score will um, rank your academics, so your, your GCSEs, as the same value of your UCAT score. So they will combine that together. So your UCAT score is relatively less important. Um, the one thing that I, I want to, to, to say on that, and this is, this is something to think about, is that you can still differentiate yourself more with a UCAT score, relatively speaking, than your academic score, because a lot of students who are applying to medicine will have academic scores that are more indistinguishable, relatively speaking, than their UCAT scores. So if a lot of people are applying to that university and they all have a strings of nines and eights and it's relatively similar, but there's a wider spread within UCAT scores, I would wonder about exactly how even that split is, is going to, to wash out being. But it certainly is the case that it is less important overall than with say higher scoring or, or, or universities that put more weight on the UCAT. Finally, there are those that, that rank applicants by UCAT score that state that the UCAT scores for previous years was, was pretty low. And so it's not, um, 
too challenging to get over that bar. So they will rank applicants exactly the same as with high scoring universities. But for instance, St Andrews went right down some of the deciles in previous years. Now, again, that's that's the lowest score. And we don't necessarily want to be applying based on the fact that we think we might be okay because we might have the lowest score they will accept. But they're going much lower down in the ranking than, than other universities that put more of a weight on, on UCAT. Um, and um, finally, the lowest scoring universities. So if the UCAT score is a bit lower, then these universities, instead of putting a more even split like, like Leicester does, 50-50 um, UCAT and academic score, then these universities put less weight than that. So for example, Exeter only puts 25% of the, the, the value of your, your overall score in terms of shortlisting on the UCAT relative to your academic score. And so that's university where if your UCAT score is a bit lower, it is less important for the overall application. Um, Queen's Belfast is another interesting one to consider. They have a slightly more esoteric ranking uh, system and slightly more esoteric way of deciding who to, to shortlist. Um, there are 42 available points uh, for you to win at Queen's Belfast when they're deciding who to invite to an interview. The UCAT only amounts to six of those available 42 points. And within those six points, there are tranches. So you get six points if you've got a very high score, five points slightly lower, four points lower than that, three if it's bang on the middle, two, one, you get the idea. The, the important thing there is that if you've got some sort of middling score, you're only sort of losing potentially three out of 42 points um, overall, if you're applying through to, to Queen's Belfast. So that's, that's one to, to potentially think about and consider. Um, there are others that, that rank, um, do not rank by UCAT as such. It's just, do you have above a score of some, some, some low threshold, for instance, Keel at 2280. Um, that, that's one that you might, might consider. Sunderland is also, also fairly similar as well. They state that the UCAT score must be in the top eight decimal. So you must score above the bottom 20%. For, for say Sunderland, um, which operates very, very similar to Kiel as well. Above that is less important for your application process. So the other thing that you can, you can see here that's, that's important is you've got more than enough universities here. Even if your score is, is say within the say bottom 60%, you've got more there than you can actually apply to anyway. Um, and so these are universities that, that it would be worth looking at if your score is, is slightly lower. Um, again, all of this is going to be available or is available, sorry, on our website, on the Medic Portal's um, comparison tool. Um, so you can use that to get all the information that I've just given you and more to make sure that you're going to be able to um, make that sort of strategic application. Um, now, other options. If we are, say, scoring not quite as well as we'd have liked to uh, at our UCAT this year, there are still options available. Obviously, you can take the BMAP, um, which widens the number of universities that you, you can apply to. Take another, another bite of that apple and, and apply to, to, to the, the BMAP universities, although obviously there aren't quite as many of them. Um, you could always take a different degree and go through as a, a postgraduate, sorry, go through as a, a graduate entry medic, which would involve another bite the UCAT down the line. Or if you want to have another whack at the UCAT next year, then you'll be able to uh, reapply and potentially um, think about a more competitive UCAT score and a stronger application next year. What I would say is to be a bit self-critical about that and think, what is the reason if I've got a UCAT score that I didn't, um, didn't perhaps do quite as well, didn't get it quite what I wanted to, is it because realistically, uh, did I leave it too late? In which case, a more strategic approach to the UCAT, a longer term approach to the UCAT, beginning early, doing more prep next year, might well really make a difference. If that's the case, it might be something that, that you could consider. Um, you could always consider as, as well uh, an alternative career in allied health. So, so potentially nursing, uh, radiography, uh, careers like that, um, which are, are medical related. You could apply to an international university and study abroad. Um, so, for instance, Humanitas over in Italy does not use the UCAT, has its own entrance test. Um, and so you would be, be obviously able to, to apply there. Um, 
you could also think about applying to a private university. For example, Buckingham does not use the UCAT. Um, if you were considering doing that, it's and come on, it's mentioned that the fees are not the same as if you'd applied to, to other universities that we've talked to before. Um, but that's something that, that, that you may want to consider, um, given that they, they, they don't use the, the UCAT as part of their, their interview and um, offer process. Um, so, what's next? BMAP prep. Uh, if you are sitting the BMAP, registration closes this week, so get prepping. Um, and make sure that you are applying, preparing for your interviews. Uh, you could have the first interviews in four weeks' time. Um, you can save 10% on, off on all of our interview prep if you use the code INTERVIEW10 uh, on this screen. Um, and you can make most of our free guides, blogs, and upcoming webinars. Uh, as they are free, the interview code is obviously slightly less important. Um, but, interview, but the code being more important for um, our courses, our doctor designed interview strategies, um, we pioneered the 20 station uh, MOI experience. Uh, and so that is uh, something that we are really proud of. And when I, when I worked um, for Academy Trust, I absolutely like, very, very useful to have the, the medic portal MMI experience there. That was really helpful. And um, the um, 30 minute online mocks again, and the uh, specific advice with tutoring. And this is really important. Our tutors know how the different universities interview. And so that is really valuable when thinking about how to make that, that, that perfect interview prep is to get that specific university advice um, and putting together training for all of our, our new tutors. And the emphasis on that training is really specific university advice to make sure that, that everyone has been prepped. Absolutely. Um, as well as our, our one week boot camp as well. Um, so if you uh, book now, there is also an early bird discount as well uh, if you book soon. Um, which you can combine with our code uh, interview 10 uh, to make sure that you get that 10% off as well. Um, and we also have a bunch of upcoming red webinars that you can uh, register for on our website. Uh, there is a note taking strategy for medical school that uh, I'm really proud of. I think that's going to be really cool. Um, it's got a lot of academic research in that about how to absolutely make sure that your note taking is uh, absolutely on point, which yes, will be useful for medical school, but as a previous head of sixth form, make sure that you can also take notes for A-level. It's gonna be super useful. Um, on the ninth, we've got advice on getting into medical school or getting into medicine. And then we run into our interview webinars. Um, how will med schools interview? Get that inside track to make sure that you know how each individual medical school is going to be, be applying through this year. And also importantly, who's online and who isn't? So how is that going to take place? Um, on October the 25th, we're going through some of our hardest MMI stations, showing them how they're acted out and explained how to do well. Um, then our final one is hot topics and ethics update to make sure that you're prepared for questions that can be thrown at you based on our previous ongoing unpleasantness and um, how that could come up in your medical interviews. Um, and finally, we've got top revision strategies for medic school exams to make sure that you know what to expect when you're going in. Um, we've had some support writing these from um, medics who taught undergraduates, how to get through their medical school exams. And so um, that should be really helpful as well. Um, so I've now got a few minutes to take some questions as well. As I said at the top, um, it would be difficult to do very specific individual advice, but if there are questions that were perhaps a bit more general, um, then I'm going to ask my colleague uh, if he could uh, send me through on Slack some of the uh, top questions that have been asked so far. So main questions, um, why have universities been put into each category? That is an excellent question. Why do we put them into those categories? <sighs> There's a level, I'm going to be honest with people, there's, it's a level of our judgment, or it's entirely, well, really, it's entirely our judgment. The high scoring university, the, the university to apply with a high score are ones that use UCAT either exclusively or overwhelmingly, or have very high, realistically very high cutoffs. So in previous years, the lowest scores invited for interview were high. That's why we've put those universities into where to apply with high scores. It is a judgment on our part. There is no such thing as a university going, we are a high scoring university. And as I'm sure you'd be, be shocked to learn, there are not universities that go, we are a low scoring university. So that is 
not what we are saying at all. We have made judgments as to where it would make more sense to investigate applying to based on how that has been used. So we have made a judgment that if you have um, a slightly higher score, that it makes sense to apply to universities where the UCAT is being used more than uh, less. And if you have a slightly lower score, it is our judgment that it would make sense to investigate medical schools where there is less um, of an emphasis put on UCAT. But again, I want to make clear, like, we have made those, those judgments ourselves. We have made those, um, those decisions. That is not something that we've taken direct from the universities. It's our judgment. Um, and um, yeah, other questions around SJT. So I haven't talked too much about, about SJT and, and, and that's fair enough. So the most, the reason why is that the uh, universities tend to simply have cutoffs for SJT above the third band. Um, not exclusively, and it is absolutely worth checking our website. The website will have um, the details on that as well and on, on our comparison tool uh, website. Um, and that will make clear does how the SJT is being used, but by and large, it is simply above the third, um, above the third band. For some, it's used and amalgamated in interview, which is why it's not been talked about um, directly in terms of an application, because it's taken and used separately during the interview process. So I'm not saying for a minute, it doesn't matter if you haven't got above a band, if you've got above band three or whatever, it does, but it comes to play more often in interviews. Um, but again, that is detailed um, on our website. And um, hmm, there is a question here about using total scores. So the vast majority do use total scores. There are some exceptions. Um, and in the case of a tie break, the verbal reasoning score, I'm just sort of re reading through my notes here, the verbal reasoning score is used at a tie break um, or can be used at a tie break. Um, sorry, I can't read my own handwriting. Um, sorry, by and large, no, they don't use individual scores. Some universities might use verbal reasoning as a tie break, um, but it is very uncommon for the individual scores to matter that much. They do take the average um, overall. The SJT obviously is separated out. So um, in answer to that question, by and large, no, it is overall. There are some individual instances where um, the verbal reasoning is used in a tie break, but it is very rare. Um, and I think um, I'm going to thank you all very much uh, for coming to this webinar. I hope this has been very useful. Um, I wish you the best of luck with your application. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on future webinars.